We're glad to know that you're still there. It's still The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, right now, we're just, uh, uh, in a moment's time, we're going to be joined with, uh, by an expert in mental health, and she will be talking to us about some of the things that happen. But at this point, I'd like to just say um, bravo to all the people who have survived depression, who have survived a lot of things that happen here in Nigeria. Uh, especially like housewives, for instance, that maybe after so many years you still don't have a child and families and friends will be on your case. After wedding, the first question they ask you maybe after the few, first few months is, uh, uh, I, hope, I hope something is coming on. Whether you have planned your family to start making babies after three years, they don't care. They just want the next nine months for you to have a baby. And I saw on the papers today um, a cleric who had a child with the wife for the first time after 35 years of marriage and i was just clapping and, mm -hmm. and then we also have the story of ondo first female speaker jumoke akindele ajulo who has given birth for the at first 54. time at 54. yeah i wonder what she went through to get to this point and i wonder how much of joy i'm just imagining the kind of joy that will be in that household now congratulations to you madam a whole lot of congratulations there. You know, marriage is one of the... I, I read yesterday um, some of the... Because we've never had the cases of suicide in this country as we've seen it in recent times. Mm -hmm. And mental health cases are, as we said earlier, are issues that people really didn't talk much about in Nigeria. Um, but now it's become a thing. And some of the triggers... Some of the things that trigger it, uh, which I saw yesterday, is marriage. Yeah. Marriage, uh, uh, poverty, not having enough money mm. available to you, uh, living in some certain kind of areas. These are some of the triggers. Stress is a major trigger yeah. for depression and mental health illnesses. And, but this depression is just one of the expressions of mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. There are different expressions of it you have bipolar disorder you have um, anxiety you have different things so um, it is good that people have themselves diagnosed it's good that people go have themselves checked so that they can know what stage they are if they have such issues so that they can easily um, assess treatment and then get it sorted out as soon as possible mm. And when we say um, poverty, it's, it's not just money. They, they, they're poor in a lot of other things, um, but you have a lot of money. Uh, was it Bob Marley or one of the philosophers who said that uh, some people are so poor that the only thing they have is money? And, you know, I have a lot of friends, for instance, in, in the UK, in America, especially in the UK, that will tell you that if one thing will kill them is depression in the, that place and it's not because they're not making the money but because they don't have a social life anymore you are just on your own it's not like here you go on the street you can always meet someone you can visit friends and all that but there you just go to work you come back home and you're all alone and so maybe for that person it may not be poverty of money but poverty of friends poverty mm -hmm. of you know you don't have the things that make your social life complete and all yeah. that so whatever the lack is, it could lead to something that you do not want uh, to degenerate into something else. So mental health comes in various ways. And the only thing that you need to do is to check, to check and to check and to check. Yeah, you know that you've mentioned the UK. You know, in the UK, they have mental health hospitals, mm -hmm. so many of them, uh, some by government, you know, the NHS, and then you have by individuals, you privately owned, you have those owned by NGOs. But here in Nigeria, I'm not sure we have enough of it. I don't think we mm. do. We have, we know about the psychiatric uh, hospital in Yaba. But apart from that, not much is known of any other. Mm. Do you understand? So these are some of the things that we probably need to begin to take note of in this climb to see to it that, um, uh, because you do not need to wait until you see somebody stripped naked, run around the streets before we say, oh, something should have been done. This is the time. And that's why it's important that we're talking about it. The awareness that it will create for people to begin to take note that, yes, this is a thing that they should be taking note of. This is a thing that um, they need to uh, 
be mindful of so that they can maintain um, a state of well-being, a positive state of well-being. Yeah, and we should also note that even at some point where someone gets to go naked, that's not the end of it. You, you, they can still go to a psychiatric home, uh, get what they, the help they need, come out as people that can still contribute. There was a, a celebrity recently, I can't even f remember the name, a, a lady, I know it's a lady, that went naked, was found walking naked on the street and was taken to uh, where she could get help. And she's back on her feet and doing whatever, whatever she needed to do. So we don't wait and then someone gets naked and then the next thing you do is chain that person to somewhere and mm -hmm. be beating the person and saying you're giving treatment. It, it, it shouldn't work that way. So well, it's good you mentioned that yeah. aspect where people are chained. There, yeah. there was a time, I think two years ago, three years ago, we had so many incidences where um, uh, some, some religious homes mm -hmm. were found to have um, places where they change children and adults in the name of treating them of mental illnesses and that is just definitely not a way to go and some of them are just because they change religion anyway yeah and some <laughs> because they, they, they yeah some because of drug addiction yeah some because they were stubborn to their parents and stuff like that you know we really need to do something i'm i'm very excited we're talking about this let's hope that um uh, when we talk about it, that it will create the level of awareness mm. that we hope to see it create. I'm also looking forward to a time when uh, we will have um, private practice of these therapies and all the people that we need in this field of mental health so that some people may be more comfortable going to private people who uh, don't necessarily have to be called Lavayev. Yaba left rather, yeah. <laughs> because when you go to that place, it becomes like uh, you are bonkers, yeah. in quote. Already. Sadly, that's not how <laughs> it should be. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take a break and we'll be back to treat some of these topics uh, in depth. You're welcome back. Uh, we're now being joined by the Chief Nursing Officer, Mental Health uh, in um, Lassud, uh, in the person of Mrs. Dada Adeshola Olua Tosin. Welcome to the program, Ma. Morning, sir. How are you doing today? Fine. Uh, walk us through how the response has been uh, like in the mental health facility. You know, uh, we have been observing that maybe now people are talking more about mental health but maybe that's just a supposition we are having and it's not true what's the state of things how are people how are nigerians now taking the issue of mental health good morning yes when we talk about mental health i think people are being um, get the people are getting more awareness now because we understand that Back in those days when you say you should be your brother's keeper, it's more than that now. When you see someone that is going through a form of stress, people are now being more helpful, more responsive, ready to come to their aid. And even for those that do not want to speak out when they have issues, you discover that you find people trying to move close to them just to ascertain and check on them whether they have any issues bothering them. And once you're able to identify, people make extra effort to ensure that in their own little way, they are able to salvage the situation at some point. So with this, I think people are becoming more aware of their mental health because nobody wants to find themselves or herself in a state of mental illness. And as a result of that, we are doing everything possible just to ensure that such, it can be controlled, though it cannot be averted completely. Okay, I, uh, would you say we have um, a large number of people with mental illnesses in Nigeria, or is just us imagining that we have up to 60 million people? How have been the cases in the hospital where you work? Ma, we have lots of people with mental illness. It's just that it's only those that you see presenting in the hospital. So you begin to look at it that when you want to use that statistic, you might not be getting it. But even most people working in the, even within our homes, within the neighborhood, many people have mental issues, mental illness. Though they may not come down with fully fledged mental illness, 
Because mental illness itself is encompassing. You have diverse things that you can pick out. And a health practitioner can easily detect and look at it that, ah, this person I'm seeing is not really there. And at some point, you look at it that if care is not taken, things might go out, get out of hand. But when you look at the statistic coming to the hospital, well, compared to the statistic we have some years back, Yes, people are becoming more responsive. The, the, the number of people we have, I think at least on a, on a weekly basis, when I want to get the statistic, if I want to tell you that, okay, these are the maximum number of people we'll see presenting at our, our own health facility. We see like 200 cases, 200 patients coming over in a week. I'm just using that as an approximation now. We see more. But at least on the average, we get like 200 patients we see on a weekly basis. And when you want to tally that in a year, it's, uh, in a month rather, it's, it's, up, it's a number. It's a number. Do All right, describe, describe for us. We look describe for us the most common Ma types. Yeah, the most common types of mental disorders, uh, including their early signs and how to treat them. Yes. The the most common types of mental disorder you see, you see schizophrenia and we see depression. But majorly, depression is actually having an edge over schizophrenia. And I think this is because of the prevailing situation in the country now, which affects home, affects children, affects husbands, affects individuals. Is it poverty you want to talk about? Not being motivated at work. And when people are responding, you just see a cheerful person coming to work, looking moody, not wanting to talk to anybody. And you even look at them and you're like, ah, ah, is this you? And when it's going to start like that, it's not something that just happens overnight. You can just start with neglect of personal hygiene. The person loses interest in ple pleasurable activities, not wanting to socialize. And at times they lock up themselves in a particular environment, not wanting to be disturbed. They just want to be in their own comfort zone. And of course, that comfort zone is a danger zone to them because they are not willing to talk to anybody. And if this progress over time without nobody coming to help and not being able to recognize this, then diverse thoughts begins to come in. And when they begin to have delusion of worthlessness, then when it gets to that point, you see an individual looking at it that it's better to end it all. And when we get to that point of ending it all, that's the most dangerous period of an individual, because you just see, they just say, uh, they looked at him, they couldn't find him, he hung himself, he committed suicide and things and things like that. So it, 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 that is about depression. But when you talk about hallucination, you, uh, when you talk about schizophrenia, yes, schizophrenia too is there, but in, the difference between schizophrenia and depression is that in depression, help is being sought, the patient can move from that period of depression to Another mood that we call um, a, a manic phase, but both are not really good. But when a patient is even in a manic phase, you can still control. You can still control to some extent. At least you can see the person coming out with what they are saying, what they are ventilating from their mind. You are able to pick one or two things. But when in depression, the patient is not even talking at all. You cannot say this is where the problem is, except to make an extra effort. What is schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is... Is complete split of mind. There is complete distortion. There is no orientation to time, place, and person. There is hallucination. There is delusion. There is paranoia. And for this to be corrected, it takes a longer period of time for you to be able to get a reasonable, um, a reasonable. Uh, when you look at it, you want to say, okay, when you want to uh, uh, appraise your treatment. It takes a while before you can say, yes, this patient is really coming up. It's coming back to his morbid state. Okay, uh, just walk us through some of the things that need uh, mental uh, care. Because you have mentioned uh, depression and one other, but there might be a lot of things that we just overlook. Uh, meanwhile, we need to seek help when we see these things. So mention some of the things that... Uh, should take us to the mental health facility or should make us seek help uh, from an expert? You were asking uh, sure. yeah. Yeah, some other things that would 
should prompt one to go seek help in yes. mental health. And that would have also been followed by how many of these facilities we have yes, in and the what country. Of the manpower, like exactly. we we're talking about, whether there are people in private practice and all that, even the government, how many mental health experts do we even have in this country? Mm -hmm. And now there is a Jakba syndrome. <laughs> so I don't know, doctors are going and they are part of the doctors. And especially in other climes, they need them even more because uh, those people recognize the importance of mental health. And I don't know how many are in Nigeria now. So she mentioned 200 per week. Mm -hmm. How many people attend to the 200 per week? Because mental health issue, uh, most times, it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of thing that you, you, you go through therapy. Matter of fact, it's a continuous yes. thing. Because so, from what I gathered, in the UK, for instance, when you've been treated in the hospitals, mm. you know, after that, when you're discharged from the hospitals, you then go to the private hospitals. That's those run by individuals who mm. sometimes just, they have a home, mm, or be a duplex, yes. you know, and different patients are in different rooms being attended to, you know, until they eventually uh, get out of it and get stable enough to, to be let out. Even when they do get let out, they have been monitored carefully. So it is a whole lot of processes involved in taking care of this. Hello, I wonder if we've been able to get Mrs. Dada back. I'm not sure she's there. Well, we've been talking to Mrs. Dada Adeshola Olua Tosin, Chief Nursing Officer, Mental Health Nurse in Lassud. And she was giving us an insight into what is happening. And the good thing about what she said is that people are now beginning to see the importance of going to get these checks. And whether it is for you or for someone you love or someone you have seen in the street and taken compassion on or anything, we need these expertise. We need these mental health checks for all of us. Like we said in the, uh, earlier on, you said, um, El Rufai said, <laughs> everybody yes. living in Lagos or yes. in hell and all yes. that. Yes, because of the traffic situation in Lagos. We know. People in Lagos sleep in two places, one in the office and one at home. Mm -hmm. Because you get home late and you have to get up in the morning. Even if you have a car of your own, you have to get up to beat traffic. So you come very early in the morning and you get to the office before 6 o'clock and you're supposed to resume at 8. So you take that time to sleep a little bit. That doesn't happen anywhere else. Lagos is peculiar. So we need these checks and all that. It's not something that we should be stigmatizing the people who get the help. Yeah, we, I think now that uh, it's out there, unlike it used to be, uh, people are more exposed about it. People are beginning to see that when you talk about mental health wellness, you're not talking about people who have gone bonkers completely. Yeah. But even if it is, that one has gone bonkers completely. Why stigmatize instead of help? Mm. You know, and, and that brings to mind what we've been experiencing or noticing in recent times, especially since the advent of uh, handsets, mobile phones, where instead of people helping people in crisis or in need, mm. the first thing that comes to mind is photograph. to yeah, take photographs and videos so you're quick to upload. And I think Nigerians should begin to go back to the core. We are a communal people. Mm. We care for one another. Mm. We are not the kind of people that do not give a hoot about the next person, your next door neighbor. We should go back to our core and begin to know who is my neighbor. Yeah. How is my neighbor doing? You know? And also, I also have come to understand that from experts and from reading that exercising, maybe not regularly because some of us are not that disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guilty of exercising on a daily. Yeah. But try and ex exercise as much as you can. I understand it also helps with mental well-being. Yeah, uh, something that maybe it's not related, but I think it is. Um, it's bad enough for someone to have Down syndrome. And I've noticed that so many families with children with Down syndrome, just, just say, okay, because it's a human being, let me not kill the person. You lock that person inside a room. You don't let that person come out. Mm. Friends and family must not see that person because uh, the person has Down syndrome. And I mean, so Down syndrome 
plus another thing which could lead to mental health problems for a Down syndrome uh, person. Mm. You, you know, it's, it's double, double wahala, like a uh, yeah. fella would say. So you have a Down syndrome person. It doesn't make that person less of a human being. In fact, some of them have specialties yeah, that... special skills. You know, yes. If, if, if the, yes, if they focus on that skill, you will find out that nobody else in the world may be able to do that. For instance, there's this guy who, if he flies on a plane, once he lands, he can draw the aerial view of even if it's New York. He has that. That, that that's a special yes. gift. Who else can do that? But he has Down syndrome. There is another guy who nearly won the America Got Talent the other time. He, was, he has Down syndrome and he was blind as well. But he could play the keyboard and sing beautifully. He went through like three of the stages and nearly mm. won. So if someone has Down syndrome, Yes, they need special care, but special care also should come with special love, not to lock them inside the room. Because even I, if you lock me inside a room... A normal person, a normal person. Inside becomes abnormal. Man, I, I'm not sure how I will survive one week in a place that I'm just locked in there. I know that they don't want me to come out. That is, I don't have the kind of love that a normal person should have. It will affect me. Yeah. So if a normal person can be affected, then... Why would you treat people that way? So please, we should be our brother's keepers and revert to uh, our real African ways yeah. of being our brother's keepers. In fact, in almost all the languages, I don't know about your language, but in my language, greetings are a question asking how you're doing. Good morning is not good morning. They'll ask you, did you wake up well? Was it well with you in, in the night? Are you sitting? Are you sitting okay? Are you standing? Are you standing? Okay? They are all questions showing that we used to care. We used to care. So we need to start going back yeah. to caring. Yeah. Okay, so we're hoping that we're still going to be joined uh, by someone who can tell us about Sudan. But in the meantime, we'll take a short break. We also have in the mix a sports coming up uh, later on before we close. But we'll just take this short break and we'll be back in a moment.